Welcome to Cloud On Air, live webinars from Google Cloud. We are hosting webinars every Tuesday. You can ask questions anytime on the platform, and we have Googlers on the standby to answer them. I'm Minhas Kazi, Developer Advocate for Google Data Studio. And I'm Matt Hamrick, Developer Program Engineer for Data Studio. Let's get started. So Data Studio is Google's business intelligence and data visualization platform. In this presentation, we'll cover what is Data Studio, who can and should use Data Studio, how can you connect your data in Data Studio, and how can you share the dashboards that you create. Before we go into our presentation, let's try to see um, who would be interested in using Data Studio. Maybe you're an analyst who wants to monitor internal business metrics of a business. Or maybe you're a developer who's working with a client and from the solution you're building needs a dashboard built on top of it. Maybe you're an executive who would like to present results in the meeting for maybe a quarterly results or maybe a all hands results. Or maybe a C you're a CTO of an organization who would like to provide additional value to your customers. Or maybe you're a data scientist who had just done some great research and have some findings and you'd like to publish these findings on a blog post so that everyone can see those and play around with the data. Or maybe you're just owner of some data and would like to visualize that. In most of these cases, the solution that you need to work with, the, the visualization platform would need to be scalable, interactive, cost-effective, and high-performing. And all of these cases uh, go very well with Data Studio because it is a visualization and reporting platform that's completely server serverless. It runs on Google's cloud. It, you can build engaging reports and dashboards in the platform. You can leverage teamwork that works, and you can use existing connectors and templates. And also, Data Studio is completely free to use. You don't have to pay anything to use it. Now, let's see what you can actually do. We'll, look at, we'll have a look at a few um, example dashboards. So the first one over here um, shows us some website performance. And this is a live dashboard, as you can see. It's pulling in data from Google Analytics account of the Google Merchandise Store. You can pick different date ranges here. You can pick user type. And this live dashboard shows different kind of metrics that you can use to evaluate even your own website using the same template. Now, let's have a look at the second um, dashboard. And this is an economic dashboard, which talks about the economic freedom index of the world. Over here on the left side, you'll see that there is an overall score distribution. And then there is a distribution of all the other scores that make up the index. And as you hover over each of the data points, it'll show you the detailed information about each data point. And to have a look at the last dashboard, this is, of course, a FIFA World Cup leaderboard, where you can see results of different games of the FIFA World Cup and how the whole game progressed. If I look at the live knockout bracket, you can see over here, as the data loads, uh, the results of every match from the round of 16 to the finals. Now, these are some examples of what you can do with Data Studio. The way Data Studio works is that first you connect your data, then you analyze and visualize it, and then once you have built a dashboard, you can share it with other people. So when you're connecting your data, the way you connect your data in Data Studio is you, you use connectors. There are connectors available that uh, let you use data from Google Sheets or other cloud services like BigQuery, Cloud SQL, Cloud Storage, or Cloud Spanner. If you have on-premise data in maybe PostgreSQL or MySQL, you can also bring them in. Furthermore, you can connect to other Google services like YouTube, Analytics, AdWords, DoubleClick, Search Console, etc. But here's the problem. What if your data is not in any of, any of these sources? What if your data is in, uh, in some kind of maybe external website or in a social platform? Or maybe it's on-premise hidden behind a, uh, some kind of authentication method. What do you do then? That's where we have community connectors, and Matt will talk more about it. Hi, thanks, Minhas. So community connectors are the solution that we have in Data Studio that allows you to connect to your own data that's not necessarily in Google. Um, so uh, community connectors is kind of three main points to it. It's built in App Scripts, which is Google scripting platform that works across all of the different Google apps. It's low effort to develop. Uh, you only need to define a few functions. And it has a share and publish model that should already be familiar to anyone who's used Drive. So to develop a connector, you have these three main methods that you have to implement. Uh, get config, get schema, and get data. 
Get config, the first one, is just a way that you can say, these are the configuration options that are going to be necessary in order for my data to actually be connected to. Get schema uh, pr just provides the fields that will be necessary to say, these are the fields that make sense for my data source. And get data is the actual fetch to the data source itself. So this might be talking to um, some sort of SQL database, or can alternatively just be making like a simple HTTP call. Um, so I'm going to do a quick demo showing the com a community connector. Um, this one is for Stack Overflow. So uh, what you'll do when you go into Data Studio is you'll have the ability to make a connector to any data source here. So I'm just going to search for Stack. And you'll see here at the bottom we have Stack Overflow Questions. That's the one I want to use. So I just click Create Data Source. And that takes us to this next page where we'll be configuring the connector. So you can see that there's kind of a few options here. It says, which tag would I like to do? How many results do I want? And what sort of sort should it do? So I'm going to use the predefined tag of Google Data Studio. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a results count of 22. And I'm going to sort by votes. Um, you'll also see here at the bottom that there's a thing checked that says use report template for new reports. This is just provided by the connectors creator, and it's basically a way to like get you kickstarted. Where once you have this data source, it will give you something that looks good already. So we click connect, and we see this field screen. You'll see that there's quite a few fields that are provided uh, from this um, this connector. You have you know question counts, links, activity dates, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and create a report here, and this will take us back into Data Studio. So this is what Minhas was showing previously. He was showing pre-made dashboards. This is kind of the editor view that you would see for it. Um, so you'll see here that even all I had to do was put in a couple of configuration items, and I already have a live dashboard that's looking for Stack over Overflow questions. Um, there we go. So you might be wondering what's actually going on behind the scenes when I, when I went through all those actions. So we kind of have three main categories that happens with this connector flow. We have requests that are actually made to your app scripts connector code. We have the Data Studio interface, and we have the user interaction that would happen on the interface itself. So the first thing that happens is the user selects the connector in Data Studio. That, in my case, was when I was searching for the Stack Overflow connector. After that's searched and selected, we just do a quick call to get auth type, which is an additional function you provide that just says what sort of authentication your connector needs. Um, if necessary, we trigger an auth flow. In our case, we had already authorized that connector, so that was unnecessary. So we kind of already completed the auth flow. The next thing that happens is a call to get config. And this is what actually made it where we could see which configuration items are needed. In the case of Stack Overflow, that was the tag and the, the sort options. We show that configuration interface, and we let the user complete the configuration. And then at that point, we make a call to their get schema function. And that was, able, that was what was able to show us the config fields uh, on the next page. We show that field screen, and the uh, user can edit those if necessary. In our case, we are already happy with the fields that were there. Um, and then we're just into Data Studio. At that point, the user can add any charts as necessary. Or in my case, we had a template that already had the charts created. So it just did a get data call, and it brought in all the data that we needed. At this point, Data Studio just shows the chart with the data. So just a quick uh, thing to mention. We have a Community Connector Code Lab that's live right now. You can see it at this link below. And I believe we will also be sharing that in the chat. Um, this code lab is just a great way to get started with community connectors, so that way you can kind of see what would you actually need to do to implement it for your own data source. Uh, one thing worth mentioning is kind of how you can share the community connector. So I mentioned earlier that this is, this is similar to how drive permissions work. You can share with just individual selected people. Um, you can share with your organization, organization being a G Suite account. And you can also share it with anyone with a link. Anyone at the link is a great way. If you want anyone to be able to use it, all you have to do is give them a link to your connector, and they'll be able to connect to it. We also have a new feature that we launched uh, this week called Connector Direct Links. And direct links are something that we're really excited about. It allows you, as a connector developer, to give someone a link that's personalized to them with the known values that you can know that they'll want ahead of time that also can customize any templates. So I'll show that off right now through this link. So before, when we went to the Stack Overflow questions, I had to type in all of the fields that we needed. 
And actually, we've had this happen a couple of times before. Since this is still a new feature, currently it's behind a flag. We're going to launch it to production later this week, so it's not working. But if this would have been working correctly, the Google Data Studio tag would have been filled in, along with the result count and the sort. So anyone could just click the link, and they wouldn't have to put in the configuration. Yes. It would be already configured. For so them. normally, uh, in, in this case, this demo, these fields up here would have been filled in. Okay. But since it isn't actually live quite in production yet, there's just a small technical sure. flub there. Uh, so one of the things that's nice uh, about the way we have this set up is there's also a publishing model that's friendly to individuals or companies. Um, for individuals, one of the easy uh, things that they can do is they can just publish this as an open source connector. This allows them to have kind of the, the maintenance cost to be put off where we'll kind of handle making sure that that's taken care of. There's also uh, the ability to publish as a partner maintained. So this is saying you'll maintain your own connector, but you'll also have all of the freedom to do any sort of monetization schemes that make sense for your use case. All of these guidelines are available on our developer site, and I believe that link will also be shared in the chat below. Regardless of choice, this makes a simple way where you'll be able to share your community connector with anyone that needs to see it. Next slide, we'll be going back to Minhas for how Data Studio can be used to analyze your data. But before that, I'd just like to draw the attention to all these connectors that we have. We're already above 100 uh, community connectors with over 500 data sources, so we'd love to see you use it. So that's a lot of data sources and a lot of connectors. Uh, so Matt, if I want, let's say I am a developer in an organization and I'd like to build a connector, what kind of experience or expertise would I need? Uh, really just any simple JavaScript experience will do. Um, since App Scripts is just a JavaScript, um, a JavaScript that's run by Google, really all you need to do is implement those couple of methods, go through the code lab, and get started. Sure. Um, and let's say if I'm building a connector to a, some kind of web API, um, how much, if I already know about the API, how much time could it take to build such a connector? Usually it doesn't take much more than an hour or two to get everything totally sorted out, including some tests. Oh, that's interesting. Cool. So we'll probably look forward to some of our um, audiences building some connectors. Let's hope so. So going back to the presentation, um, after you connect your data, then you basically analyze and visualize it, visualize it in Data Studio. We won't get to the analyze part in details, but we do have an explore option where you can go in and explore your data in a visual interface, uh, sort of select and subset that, make a subset of the data that you're, you'd like to use, create calculated columns, and then start visualizing it. And for the visualization, uh, we'd like to show this nice dashboard that was built by, by ClickInsight. This is sort of a meta Data Studio dashboard that shows off different types of, ch types of charts in Data Studio using a Data Studio dashboard. Hmm. So as you can see here, we have a big number type chart, bullet chart, um, uh, donut charts, also pie charts, uh, bar column, paired column, stack bar, line graphs, um, stacked area, scatter plots, uh, maps and geoplots. Mm -hmm. And all of these uh, graphs are available to use in Data Studio. You can take your data, and if your data supports it, uh, then you'll be able to use those charts. Now, there are some other examples we'd like to share uh, that uses these default charts. Let's take a look at first the economic data. This has some economic information. We've already shown this dashboard once that shows the distribution of uh, the World Econ Freedom Index uh, by different countries. And there is another dashboard, which is the Google Analytics dashboard that was created by the Google News Initiative team. This is focused more towards news websites. And this is more of an experience than a dashboard. Uh, and we'll show you what this means. We'll first search for the Google Merchandise Store uh, Analytics data. And as you select it, uh, this dashboard will fetch data from your analytics account and populate the entire dashboard. And you can see that this dashboard is right now loading the data. And as it loads, the whole dashboard will basically show the flow of your uh, of the visitors to your website and how they convert into different measures. And that those numbers will show up and you can read through the different texts and sort of the dashboard will explain what is happening. So you can easily use Data Studio to create interactive infographics. And then uh, we also have this very nice dashboard uh, that, is, that uses a community connector. This dashboard uses the Google Fit community connector. And this was created by Datasaurus Rex. And this most likely has some dummy data uh, uh, populating this. But you can copy this dashboard and use the Google Fit community connector to populate this using your data. And only you have access to your dashboard, and no one else will be able to see it. And in, in this dashboard, you can see 
Uh, you can track average weight over last two weeks, um, average activity over last 28 days, and average steps taken over last 28 days. And this gives you a light, nice overview of what has been happening in your life. And lastly, we have this other example, uh, which shows IoT data. Now, this is pulling in data from uh, a BigQuery database. And it is pulling in data for different sensors. You can also, if you have IoT data, maybe in BigQuery, maybe in CloudSQL, or maybe in some other sources, you can pull those in and visualize those IoT data in Data Studio and share the results with other people. Now, you have built, you have connected to your data, um, you have visualized it, but maybe when you're visualizing it, you're missing some specific type of visualization or the visualizations that are available in Data Studio doesn't necessarily work for you. For that, we have a new feature that is in developer preview right now that is called Community Biz. What's, what this lets you do is build your own visualization in JavaScript and then you can bring that into Data Studio. And we have the documentation available in our developer site um, it'll tell you how you can build your own visualization and we'll also take a look at a live example. Let's have a look at the showcase and see what different examples we have. So let's say we'll look at the Sunburst dashboard. So Matt, uh, if someone is trying to build a visualization, uh, if they already know D3 and already can build a viz, how much, dif how much difficult is it to bring that visualization into Data Studio? I would say if you're already familiar with the visualization library you're looking to use, it's probably 35, 45 minutes for this one. It's a little bit simpler. OK, that's, that's very interesting. So maybe we'll have more of our audience bringing visualizations for Data Studio. Let's hope for that, too. So as you can see, this is a, comp uh, this is a JavaScript-based uh, uh, visualization built in D3, and that's being visualized in Data Studio right now. And it'll work with other Data Studio functions like filters, um, uh, if you are using dropdowns, all of that will work with this. This is right now in developer preview, so if you'd like to use this, you can go to our developer site and sign up for the developer preview. So you've connected to your data, you've analyzed it, and you have visualized it, but now you'd like to share this. There are different sharing models available in Data Studio. So first of all, you can share the reports using uh, the G Suite or Drive Formation. So just the same way you would share docs, um, slides, you can similarly share reports with other people. You can share them by user or across your organization or anyone with a link. And you can also give people view access or edit access. If, if you give someone uh, view access, they'll only be able to view the dashboard and pair on with the controls on the dashboard, but they won't be able to change anything in the dashboard. But if, if you give them edit access, they can use the data sources available in the dashboard and create new charts and um, graphs. Now, there is a separate data model available for data sources that you add. As you remember, data sources are when you use connectors uh, to connect to specific data sets, those are added as data sources in Data Studio. Data sources can also be shared with users. Data sources can have viewer's credentials or owner's credentials. What that means is if you create a um, data source with owner's credentials and you create, the dash uh, you create the data source and then you add that data source to a dashboard, Anyone who views that dashboard will see your data. However, if you create the data source with viewer credentials and then you create a dashboard with that, whoever is viewing the dashboard will see their data. An example of this would be Google Analytics dashboard where you, if you put in viewer credentials, it will be the same dashboard, but when you view it, you will see your accounts, but when someone else views, views that, they'll see their accounts in the same dashboard. Data sources can also be shared with uh, view access or edit access. And when you create a dashboard, you can also embed it as a report or infographic on uh, different websites. Uh, we currently support iframe-based embeds and also OEmbed. Let's see two examples. Uh, this first one is, I believe, a blog post on the Google uh, Cloud Big Data blog, where there was a we made a blog post on the uh, big, uh, Bitcoin blockchain data in BigQuery. And as you can see here. This is a normal blog post, but this dashboard is an interactive data studio dashboard that has been embedded using iframe. And this second link that we have is another blog post made on Medium by uh, one of the developer advocates at Google. And this dashboard over here you visualizes all the, World Cup, all the <coughs> FIFA World Cup goals so far. And you can play around with the data, you can filter it. Um, it also changes the links based on your selection, and you can view details on demand as you hover over different data points. 
So once you have built a dashboard, you can also uh, use it as a presentation. Instead of using a slide, if you want to, if you're giving a presentation and if you want to show it as your presentation aid, you can show the dashboard full screen and uh, play around with it, use different filters. You can also, in Data Studio, you can use the community connectors to build push button solutions. Uh, what that means is maybe the users you're trying to reach do not know SQL. Maybe they don't know about the database that you're using. They, maybe they don't know the schema. Maybe don't, they don't even know how to use Data Studio. Or they have a constraint of time. What they would like to do is they'd like to connect to your data source, provide some configuration, view their data, and then have a templated result. So you can do that using community connectors. Uh, what you can do is you can create a community connector, you can attach a template to it, and once the template has been attached, you can deploy the community connector using a single link. And what will happen then is your user will come in, put in, the, click, click on that link, view the configuration, and they'll fill in the configuration, click connect, and they'll see a templated dashboard with their data, and that dashboard will be created only for them. And they'll be able to edit it, uh, they can share it if they want, or they can just view it for themselves. So let's see an example of what we mean. So this is a data set available in BigQuery. This is a Chrome user experience report that has data for over 5 million different URLs. Um, and it will contain data about timing for first paint, first content full paint, DOM content loaded, and onload. And it will show the distribution of time for all of these websites. Uh, you can further dig down into the data using dimensions like uh, effective connection type like 4G, 3G, device type, a phone, tablet, or desktop, or which country the users are coming from. So all of this data is available in uh, BigQuery. If you go to the BigQuery site for this dashboard, you can see that this data is kept there by month. Now, if anyone wants to access this data, they'll have to go into BigQuery, run, uh, create their own SQL, and then run the SQL, and then they can access the data. And if they want to visualize it, they can bring the data into Data Studio using the BigQuery connector. That is the more longer way, and if you want to get finer control. But if you want, if you're, let's say, the owner of this data, and if you want to give a more easier solution to your uh, users, what you can do is create a community connector. And we've done that, and we'll, sh we'll show you the example. So after creating the community connector, all you give to your users is just this one URL. So we click on this URL, and we'll go into Data Studio with that connector selected and waiting for configuration. And Matt, I believe we can also add use this new feature to pre-configure this configuration. Yes, this would be able to be pre-configured as well. Awesome. So we will add in a URL. Let's say we'll put in Wikipedia. And we'll enable uh, this parameter to be modified in the report. So we'll click Connect, Allow. And the schema looks fine. And we'll create click on create report. So this will fetch the data from the BigQuery database and then create a live connection. And then it will showcase that data in this dashboard that is created only for my user. And I can edit this. Um, I can also share this with other people. And as you can see, we have different pages available for this dashboard uh, that uses the data for Wikipedia. Now we have three different pages. And we can also view it. Now. This dashboard is created only specifically for me. So I can go ahead and edit it, and this will not edit the template. So I can go into the first page, and maybe I also want to see this data for a separate website. So you can, as you can see, this is a completely drag and drop interface where I can make different kind of changes. Um, I will move this one, move this one to the left, and we'll try to do quickly make some new changes to this. So we'll take this. We'll pick all the elements on the dashboard that can be configured. We'll copy paste them. We'll move them to the side. And let's say we will change the parameter to have a different website. So maybe we'll look at google.com. So as you can see, this is completely uh, configurable by the dashboard. And as we typed in the new configuration, we have this side-by-side -side comparison for the website performance of these two websites. And once I've done that, I can go in and I can share this report with other people. I can share this by link and publish this on a website. I can share this with specific people within my organization, or I can even um, share this across my organization. 
So this is how you can build a completely push button solution using community characters in Data Studio. So to recap, um, Data Studio is Google's uh, free business intelligence and reporting platform. You can connect to any data source and make any visualization that you want in Data Studio. And you can share your visualizations with others in different ways. Uh, if you are trying to get uh, know more about Data Studio, you can build a dashboard by going into uh, datastudio.google.com. If you want to see more examples of uh, dashboards built in Data Studio, you can go to datastudio.google.com slash gallery. This has templates from our, um, from our users and different uh, partners. Uh, you can also have a look at the Community Connector Gallery by going to uh, datastudio.google.com slash data. You can get support by going to support.google.com slash data studio. If you're more into developing uh, solutions, uh, maybe community connectors or community Vs, you can go into our developer site, which is available at developers.google.com slash data studio. We also have open source repository available, which has examples of different code. Uh, and you can go there by GitHub, going to github.com slash Google Data Studio. And if you build something cool, maybe a, an awesome dashboard, maybe a connector, maybe a viz, share that with us by using the hashtag uh, Google Data Studio. And now stay tuned, stay tuned for live Q&A. We'll be back in less than a minute. Welcome back to the Q&A session. We, looks like we have a few questions from our audience. So the first question is, can we integrate graphs and reports created using Data Studio directly with web applications? And it also asks about real-time reports. I'll go ahead and take this one. Sure. So we can integrate graphs and reports in Data Studio directly in the web apps. We kind of showed off a few examples of that. There was the blog post uh, that Minhas showed. Um, those links should be available as well. Um, real-time reports aren't currently supported. Um, in terms of like updating as they go. But if you just uh, click the refresh button, it will always make the data live again. So um, I'm assuming that we don't support streaming data yet, but if you yeah. manually refresh yes. the dashboard, it will get updated. So the, yeah, that's correct. There's no streaming data yet, but you can go ahead and just click the refresh button and get uh, up-to-date data that way. Sure. Maybe we can also show the uh, developer page on how we can integrate different reports in web pages. So we have a page for that, and if we Go in quickly. Oh, all right. So we'll bring that up later. Um, second question is, what are the ways uh, Data Studio to create simple reports from databases such as MySQL via stored procedures? So if you already have a stored procedure in MySQL and if you have a view based on that, you can simply connect to MySQL using the MySQL connector and then connect to that view. Um, Currently, we don't support uh, passing in parameters from Data Studio to that store procedure, but that's something we're looking into and might be supported in the future. 
But if you have a view that uses the MySQL, uh, MySQL store procedure and doesn't require a parameter input, then you can just use that view. Um, third question is, how does one stop Data Studio reports from running queries in the background? So Data Studio doesn't really uh, run queries in the background. The, there are several times where it will run queries. First is that if it, if it knows that um, there are certain queries it can made beforehand uh, that will speed up your report, then even uh, before you open the report, it will sort of prefetch some queries and store them. So the next time you open the report, it won't run the query, it will just fetch from the cache. When you are building a report, every time you add a component or every time you um, edit a database that needs that requests Data Studio to get new data, then it will fet, it will create a new query and then pull that data in. If you are viewing a dashboard and the results are already in the cache, then it won't hit. It will run the query. It will just fetch the data from the cache. If you manually if you're the owner of the dashboard and if you manually refresh the data, then it will run the query again. Um, if you're having issues with multiple queries running, let's say if you're connecting to a BigQuery data set, and if you're getting a lot of queries, one thing you could do is maybe you can create a community connector and set up your own caching layer. Uh, you can cache to Firebase, you can cache to um, Cloud SQL, and then you can set up logic where the first time the data is being pulled, it will pull from BigQuery and then cache it in the middle layer, and then every uh, the following times the query is run, it will fetch from that cache, and that will significantly save on your query costs. The fourth question we have is, can one connect Google Cloud Data Store to Google Data Studio? I'll go ahead and take this one. Sure. Uh, so the short answer is yes, uh, and the slightly longer answer is not right now. So the, the reason the answer is yes is because you can make a community connector that connects to cloud, uh, Google Cloud Data Store. I don't think we currently have a first party connector to Google Cloud Data Store, uh, but that would be uh, a great one to put so if somebody is struck by inspiration, that would be a good one to make, and then go ahead and give us a pull request on our GitHub repo. That sounds good. And the last question we have is, can one export to Sheets? Can one export report to Sheets? Uh, you can't export the whole report. Like if you have, let's say, a 10-page uh, dashboard where each page has five or six elements, you can't export the whole thing as a whole. But what you can do is if on a dashboard, if you have different elements, if you hover over an element, there will be a small um, icon that will come up on the top right. And if you click on it, you'll be able to export the underlying data for that element to your sheet. So if you click Export to Sheet, whatever data is uh, was used to create that report or create this one element will get exported into a sheet where you can use that data and then create your own chart or graph in sheet or maybe even um, add additional data to it. And um, that is all, that, that's all the Q&A we have for now. Um, thanks for joining us, and stay tuned for the next session, CE Chat, Digital Transformation for Non-Digital Natives. Thank you.